Hi folks, this is Colin Stewart uh, with Georgetown Psychiatry and with the American Association of Directors of Psychiatry Residency Training. And I'm here with Bob Englander, one of the world's experts in competency-based medical education and in trustable professional activities. And we've been discussing major frame shifts in medical education over the past hundred years or so. Changes that have not only affected the way that we educate physicians, but also the way that we practice as physicians. And while in this video series, we're mainly going to be focusing on competency-based medical education and in trustful professional activities, we've been discussing that we need to start with some context. And that brings us back to the godfather of medical education himself, Abraham Flexner, and the changes he made to medical education at the beginning of the 20th century. So thanks, Colin. I, I actually really uh, am excited about this opportunity to talk about this paradigm shift to competency-based medical education. I think you're exactly right that to really understand where we're going and where, where we are and where we're going, we've got to start with an understanding of how did we get here in the first place. And you're also correct that that really starts with the grandfather of medical education in the 20th century, Abraham Flexner. Flexner was an amazing uh, educator, an iconoclast in his time who in, originally in the early 1900s was asked by the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching to write about the state of colleges and universities in the United States and Canada. And he wrote an absolutely scathing report, which they were so uh, excited about that they asked him to do the same thing for medical education. So in 1908, he set about looking at all of the medical education system in the U.S. and Canada and published his report in 1910. And it was a no less scathing indictment of where medical education was uh, at the time. Uh, to set it up a little bit, prior to Flexner, medical education in the United States and Canada were pre was predominantly a proprietary business. So wealthy people sent their children to schools that had no standards, no qualifications required, and no graduation standards. And the result was literally at times quackery. And what Abraham Flexner said was, essentially, we had to do three things in order to improve medical education in the U.S. and Canada. Number one, he said, we've got to have some grounding in the sciences. And it was Flexner who determined our prerequisites for medical school uh, at the time as biology, physics, and chemistry. Pretty remarkable that 105 years later, it's still pretty much what students are studying in the pre-medical years. Granted, we've expanded a little now to include the social sciences, but really not that much of a change. The second thing Flexner said is that all of medical education has got to be rooted in the sciences and scientific principles. He likened the clinician to a scientist in that you create a diagnostic hypothesis and then you test that hypothesis. And felt very strongly that science and the study of science should be married to medicine and the study of medicine. And then the third thing he said interestingly was that really medical education and training had to be grounded in experiential learning. It's interesting to me that he really indicted the lecture concept uh, in 1910. And what's most interesting to me is that it is one of the few things that has persisted despite his complaints. And I think it's because of the economy of it, that it is so efficient uh, from a teacher's perspective to have 180 students in the room uh, and teach something. It happens not to be particularly an effective technique for those 180 students. So again, he had these three things, ground and experience, grounded in the scientific method, absolutely with pre-medical uh, prerequisites. And uh, that concept was basically fully implemented by the late 1930s. Over the course of basically the next 70 to 80 years, there was not a huge amount of change in medical education. And interestingly, I should tell you that one other thing that Flexner had talked about was humanism in medicine. And in later writings, he actually lamented the fact that his recommendations had been implemented with an obvious uh, exclusion of some of those principles. So what happened is, as we got towards the, late, the latter half of the 20th century, people really began to be concerned 
that there was much more to being a physician than just the medical knowledge and patient care skills aspects that really were the focus of uh, the changes made under Flexner. And I would say in particular people began to think about professionalism and interpersonal communication skills towards the end of the 20th century and then uh, even expanding beyond that in terms of our notion of what it means to be a doctor. And whereas Flexner had focused entirely on what we call structure and process, what's the structure of a medical school and the process to get to become a physician and ultimately a practicing physician, which is how we got to two by two education in undergraduate medical education, two years of basic science, two years of clinical science, and how we got to really the concept of modern day residency programs for graduate medical education. Uh, people began to say, maybe it's not enough just to talk about what are the inputs to the system and what should we be focused on in terms of the outputs. And then there was an emerging literature at the end of the 20th century that suggested that there was an increasing gap between what graduates of medical school were able to do on entry to residency and what graduates of residency programs were able to do on in entrance to practice. And I think it was that gap, the notion of an expanding idea of what it meant to be a physician, and uh, some of the changes and concerns about quality and safety of provision of care in the United States and Canada that, that really forced the drive to change medical education and emerged the competency-based medical education movement, which will be the focus of the rest of our time together.